It's not going in like there's that expedite timer. Ah! Everybody is so caught up in socializing. To use the analogy that I think our next people will appreciate that uh, we're around in the third and heading home. It's not a Legion game or anything else, but uh, I do have the honor and pleasure to introduce Congressman Kelly Armstrong, who's a lifelong devoted to North Dakota, and timeless advocate for making North Dakota a better place to live and work. With his background in business, his love for the outdoors, and his volunteer and public service experience, Kelly is fighting for North Dakota values in Washington and is working to advance positive change to benefit our state and country. Kelly was first elected in 2018 and serves on the House Energy and Commerce Committees, House Committee on Oversight and Accountability, and the House Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government for the 118th Congress. Please help me in welcoming Congressman Kelly Armstrong. Triad. But we're also unique in a different way. In 
you notice this as far as you go everywhere else is everybody else wants to shine a new toy all the time. And we want to fly a B-52 for 100 years. <laughs> no, it's very, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a very unique space to be. It's, I mean, it's not, I mean, all of that. Um, and the skeleton's the same. The central nervous system's a lot different. But we do that, and we, we approach those things, and it's really, really important, and you can feel that pride when you're on the base, and you can feel that pride when you're everywhere else. And as we're transitioning to the Sentinel from the Minutemen, I've learned something um, from leadership out here that I hadn't known before, that is something that we're working on and making sure we're addressing, and you can read any article you want, and taking too long, costing too much money, but one is the maintenance of the Minuteman while we're transitioning to the Sentinel program. I mean, the, the life of these things is far past due, and it still is a strategic deterrent that we have to keep going. So we're working with our friends on the Armed Services Committee and figuring out and making sure that you all have what you need as we're waiting for this transition to make sure that the things that we are thinking it's cold and they're old. Yeah. Parts break. <laughs> things happen. And we need to make sure that while we race to re replace this and replace this system with the newer technology and all of that, that we are doing everything we can on this base to make sure that we are not only providing for men and women here, but for providing for the strategic defense of the United States. And so that's the best thing we can do. We aren't the best military in the world because we have all the shiny new toys. We're the best military in the world because we have the best fighting men and women in the world. And we're fighting for something that we, we have. We are the beacon of freedom in the world. And what our number one job is to make sure that you are provided with the things you need to do the job well. And that isn't just you know, uh, the, new, the new equipment and all of that, although that is something that we're always fighting for, but it's also making sure that the well-being of the officers, the community relationships, all of those things exist so that the people who are deployed here can pro pro focus on their primary mission, which is to keep the United States safe in an ever, ever more dangerous world. Combine that with what we have going on in North Dakota and how we can continue to do that from a, from a statewide perspective is really that interesting to watch. We obviously have the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and we have a hot war going on in the Middle East, and oil at North Dakota oil is at $71 a barrel. At any other time in history, oil would be over 120, over $110 a barrel, which drives up a lot of different stressors that exist all over the world that actually, actually potentially ends in our men and women in uniform being sent somewhere to deal with those issues. And we should be proud of that, and we should celebrate. And it's a little like the Minot Air Force Base. Not a lot of people know what goes on up here, but once they get here and see it, they're really proud to be a part of it. And I would just tell everybody, civilian, military, or otherwise, the reputation of Minot in Washington, D.C. is above and beyond. And everybody knows how important this mission is and how important the community is to supporting that mission and how hard we all work to make sure that those things exist. But it begins and ends with the people who are stationed there and the mission, you guys, and the mission that you guys project, uh, project across the world. Because it really, really is important. It is not unnoticed. And they know, <laughs> it is very clear that they know we do a lot of less up here. But we are supporting some initiatives that I think are really important, which is cold weather duty pay. Uh, again, for if you're fixing one of those things out in the middle of uh, the middle of the silo in February and it's 20, 20 degrees below zero and 55 degrees below wind chill, the equipment you need to do that and the equipment you need to stay comfortable is a little different than if you're stationed at a military base in Missouri or Alabama or anywhere else. So we're going to continue to fight for those unique things. We're going to continue to show why North Dakota's military presence is a huge factor on the world stage. And we're going to do everything we can to promote policies internationally that make sure that while we are here and we are a deterrent, we can keep our men and women in North Dakota safe and our men and women in the military safe. And the best way we can do that is by effectuating policy that one, gives you the stuff you need, two, make sure we recognize you for what you have done, and three, put the United States in the best footing in the world where we don't have to send our men and women in uniform somewhere overseas to fight um, because we have made bad policy decisions that put us there. So thank you all for being here. It's always great to be in my eye because just the support this community shows and the way in which we approach this is really could be a case study, I think, for every state in the country. And it's always proud to be here. It's always proud to see everybody. And it's always proud to support the military, both in North Dakota and in the United States.
United States as well. So thank you all for having me, and I hope you have a great rest of the conference.